G'day everyone, and welcome to the 10th Agony Anth, part of my collaboration with the Charles Darwin University Law Student Society. If you've watched the other Agony Anth videos, you've probably picked up on the fact that I really don't think that universities do enough to prepare graduates for the fundamentals of practicing law. And that's one of the reasons for this video series. Now, once you get into practice, sooner or later, and hopefully sooner, you're going to be asked to do your first appearance in court. Don't tell your mum and dad, because they will want to come along. They'll expect it to be something like the movies. They'll be waiting for you to jump up and shout, Objection, Your Honour! And not only will they be disappointed, but you'll have one extra thing to worry about. So, what do you have to do when you first appear in court? The descriptions I'm going to give in this video are based on uh, what are called duty lists or callovers. People sometimes also refer to them as cattle calls. These are appearances where matters are mentioned, which means the purpose is to see how the matter is progressing towards trial and to make any procedural orders that are necessary along the way. So what I'm going to outline in this video doesn't really count for trials and so on. This is really directed to the sort of appearances that you are likely to do first as a graduate solicitor. Okay, step one is to get a copy of the court list. You can usually find the court list online. Most courts put tomorrow's court list up online after the close of business today. Find your matter on the court list. That will tell you which courtroom you're going to be in, which judge or magistrate you're going to be in front of, and it'll also give you an idea of how many other matters are going to be called at the same time as yours. Get to court nice and early. Barristers in particular seem to love showing up at the very last moment. Don't do that. Give yourself time. Try to find your opponent outside the courtroom. If it's a criminal matter with a police prosecutor, finding the prosecutor is easy. Otherwise, feel free to ask people. Excuse me, are you Ms Brown from Maranac Lawyers? Quite often, the first practitioner that you see will say, no, but that's her over there. Go and shake hands. Feel free to let your opponent know this is your first time. No matter how competitive or full-on your opponent might seem, virtually every lawyer remembers their first time. And unless they're a truly horrible specimen, they will try to make your first appearance a little easier. And while we're on this topic, I guarantee that the judge will immediately know that this is your first appearance, mainly because you'll look terrifying. Judges are also people, and they're also lawyers who remember their first time. Judges will remain impartial in terms of the matter itself, but they will usually cut you a bit of slack when they can see that it's your first appearance. So you've found your opponent. What happens next really depends on the court you're appearing in and the preferences of the individual judge. Often in the Federal Circuit Court, the judge's associate will come to the back of court and they'll call out, All matters before Judge Jarrett at 9.30. Immediately you'll see a queue forming. One by one, people go up to the associate. It's easier, but not mandatory, if you go up with your opponent. The associate will ask which matter you're in, whether your opponent is here, and what you're expecting to happen today. So it's helpful to have that rehearsed in your head or written down on a piece of paper. It's the matter of Smith and Bloggs. I'm from Ms Bloggs, the mother, and we're asking for the matter to be adjourned for a family report. The associate might then say, does the other party agree? And you answer honestly. The associate might tell you to go straight into the courtroom and they might tell you to wait outside court for your matter to be called. It's all a question of how the judge decides to arrange their day. Typically, judges will clear away the quick matters first, the adjournments and anything where the parties agree, so the orders are going to be by consent. The other way, typical in most other courts, is that the associate calls all parties back into court for a callover. A callover is like a little mini session. The judge will call your name and you go up to the bar table and very briefly tell the judge what you hope to have happen that day. So the judge will call Smith and Bloggs and you say, Maranac, Your Honour, for the applicant mother, we're asking for the matter to be adjourned for a family report. Once the judge has been through all the matters, the judge will indicate the order that he or she is likely to take for the matters. Either way, let's assume that your matter is now ready to come on. If the judge is on the bench, remember to bow on the way into the courtroom. 
then the first thing you do after coming into court will be to fill in what's called an appearance slip or an appearance sheet. This gives details of the matter you're in, your name, your firm's name, and so on. It's really self-explanatory. Then when your matter is called, give the appearance slip to the bailiff or the associate. When it's time for your matter, the associate will call your matter. So they'll call matter BRC 17 slash 2020 Smith and Bloggs. This is your big moment. Go up to the bar table, usually to the left end of the bar table, because more senior people go to your right. And at present, you're not really senior to anybody. When you get to the bar table, I cannot stress this enough, do not put your bag on the bar table. Leave it on the ground, put it on another chair. Do not ever put a bag on the bar table. It's considered to be extremely rude. And if your judge has an eye for the traditions of the court, it will put them offside before you even open your mouth. The judge will say, I'll take appearances. Let your opponent go first so you can hear them do theirs as a last second bit of revision. Then when it's your turn, appearances follow a very simple pattern. I'll demonstrate, then I'll explain. May it please your honour, my name is Marinac, M-A-R-I-N-A-C, initials A-S, Solicitor with Pacific Maritime Lawyers. I appear for the plaintiff. So, you start with the traditional respectful greeting. You either say, may it please the court or may it please your honour. Not if it please, but may it please. Forget everything you've seen on American TV. You will hear some people give a less formal greeting. They might say, good morning, your honour. Leave that for when you're much better at reading a courtroom and for when you know the individual judges. At first, stick to may it please the court or may it please your honour. Then you give your name. If your name is complicated like mine, spell it out. If you're spelling it out, for goodness sake, do it slowly. Give the judge enough time to write it down. At the end, give your initials, then state that you're a solicitor and say the name of your firm. Finally, tell the judge who you're there representing. Okay, listen again. May it please your honour, my name is Marinac. M-A-R-I-N-A-C, initials A-S, solicitor with Pacific Maritime Lawyers. I appear for the plaintiff. Over time, you will hear a few different variations, but they all follow that basic pattern. Then you do your matter. Once you're done, the judge will say, thank you. And you respond, thank you, Your Honour. May I be excused? Sometimes the judge will just say, you are excused. But if they don't, you should ask to be excused. The judge will notice that you are being courteous and respecting the customs of the court. Judges remember these things. Finally, even if the judge has excused you, you must not leave the bar table unattended. It is considered the height of rudeness to leave the judge facing an empty bar table. Stand there at the bar table while the lawyers for the next matter are coming forward. The moment they reach the bar table, you can leave. Bow on the way out the door, and then go back to work and tell everyone how awesome you were. Honestly, it seems like there's a lot to remember, which is exactly why universities should give you more chances to practice. But soon enough, it becomes second nature. I do hope you found this video helpful. Remember, if there's something about the law that you want to know, send in a question, and I'll see you about giving you an answer. See you soon.